These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. So, um, why don't you remind me, what are the memory aids that we're going to use to come up with this table? What are some of the memory aids we have here? Um, Ronald Reagan Vise for Voters. Yeah, and what, are the, what does that stand for? Uh, real, real, virtual, virtual. Yeah. Ronald Reagan Vise for Voters. RRVV, real, real, and virtual, virtual. Okay, what about the other memory aids? And then uh, side and middle. Side, middle, middle, side. Right, shrunk and those and stand for? The shrunken magnet. Yeah. Shrunk starts with an S and magnified starts with an M. Well, the two shrunk regions are on the sides and the two magnifieds are in the middle. And then one more memory aid. Um, for how we know when it's inverted and when it's upright. If you know when it's real oh, and when it's uh, virtual. Uh, infrared for inverted and real and then uh, ultraviolet for upright and virtual. Very good. Okay, that's right. So once we know Ronald Reagan vibe for voters, we should be able to automatically say these two are the inverted cases and these two are the upright cases, IR for infrared and UV for ultraviolet. And as we were just discussing, you have to remember that the regions here refer to where you're putting the object, and then the words tell you the type of image you're going to get. So for example, if you put the object for a converging device between F and 2F, if you put the object in this region, then the image will be inverted, real, and magnified. That doesn't mean that the image will be in this region. This is where we put the object. Remember, this is the, where the side we would use for a converging device, and this is the side we would use for a diverging device. So there's only one case for a diverging device. And in your handout, we have all of the side conventions, too. OK. All right, so let's go over some new material that we didn't get to yesterday. concept of the radius of curvature. Um, and the radius of, uh, so what does the radius of curvature refer to? Well, let's say that we have, say, a mirror. Let's say we have this mirror. Now, what is its radius of curvature? Well, obviously the mirror is usually not a complete circle. But let's imagine that we extended the arc so it was a complete circle. then the radius of curvature would be the radius of that circle. So even though mirrors are not usually complete circles, you can think of them as an arc that's part of a circle. And you can imagine extending the complete circle. And then the radius of curvature is how big the radius of that imaginary circle would be. All right, so that gives us our concept for radius of curvature. There's a way you can apply this to lenses, too. Sometimes books use lowercase r for radius of curvature, and sometimes they use capital R for radius of curvature. Now, we always want to know what a variable stands for. So it would be interesting to know, does r tell us how flat the mirror is or how curved it is? And what I mean by that is, if r is big, does that mean we have a very flat mirror or a very curved mirror? Well, very curved. There's our guess. And of course, the best way to figure these things out is always on paper rather than uh, in our head. So let's try working that out on paper. So um, here I have a very curved mirror. Mm -hmm. I see. And here I have a much flatter mirror. We can see this one is much flatter. Now, is the flatter mirror part of a bigger circle or a smaller circle? Part of the bigger circle. We can clearly see that the flatter mirror, the circle is so big I can barely fit it in. The flatter mirror has a very big radius of curvature, whereas the smaller mirror has a much smaller radius of curvature. So it turns out that when r is very big, that means that we have a very flat mirror. And the way I would express that is I would say r is a measure of flatness, not a measure of curvature. Now, of course, if you know how flat something is, you really also know how curved it is. But what I mean by that is that when r is big, that means flat. So I would interpret r as a measure of flatness. It's not directly a measure of curvature. 
All right, so it's always good to have intuition for what we're talking about here. So R is a measure of flatness, not curvature. That's, it's not, that's probably not people's first guess, because R is called the radius of curvature. It's got the name curvature in it. But actually, a big R means something that's very flat. So that, that's actually a good thing to make a flashcard of. But if you forgot it, you could always draw these two circles and see that the flatter mirror is part of the bigger circle. OK, so that's an important uh, idea right there. So what would happen if we had a plane mirror? That's a completely flat mirror. We didn't talk about any of those last time, but that's another important topic in this chapter. All we went over is curved mirrors, but you almost might also see a completely flat uh, mirror. Well, is this very flat or very curved? Flat. In fact, it's infinitely flat. It's infinitely flat, so the mathematicians would say that in this case, R is infinity. And you can kind of see that because there is no circle, however big, that would include this. Doesn't matter how big you try to draw the circle, it's never really going to match this. So technically, only an infinitely big circle could match this. OK, so since r is a measure of flatness, if something is perfectly flat, its r would be infinity. And this is actually uh, important because, of course, in real life, most of the mirrors you deal with are flat. I mean, the mirror that you're used to is like the mirror in your bathroom. And the mirror in your bathroom is a flat, plain mirror. Um, and that has an infinite radius of curvature. So there's nothing uh, too weird about this. All right, so we went over two important ideas. A big r means a flat mirror. Uh, it would also mean a flat lens, even though we haven't been talking about lenses directly. But it would also mean a flat lens. And a uh, completely flat mirror would have an infinite R. Now, it turns out that if you know the R for a mirror, you can figure out its focal length. It turns out that if you know the R for a mirror, you can figure out its focal length. You might have noticed that equation in the handout if you were looking over it. So for a mirror, R equals 2F. Remember that um, R and F are not the same thing. R is the radius of curvature, and 2F is, uh, and F is the focal length. OK, so this relates the radius of curvature and the focal length for a mirror. OK, um, so a couple of comments to make about this. First of all, this only works for mirrors. This only works for mirrors. Um, there's another equation that relates R and F for lenses. But you might not be covering that in, in your course. We'll, we'll see when we look through the homeworks today. That's called the lens maker's equation. It's in the handout. But I think your course might not cover the lens maker's equation. We'll see as we go through the handout. But you definitely need to know about this mirror equation over here. Uh, another important point is that we should really, very important, put big fat dots here. Because this only relates the magnitudes of the two things. Uh, we know from our past experience that the dots mean magnitudes. And this means it's our job to figure out the right sign of the focal length. Um, this will just tell us the magnitude of the focal length, and then we have to figure out the sign. Um, so for example, let's do this example here. Here's a mirror, and I'm going to tell you that its r is uh, 1 meter. If r is 1 meter for this mirror, what would be its focal length? given R in meters. Okay. We've seen that it's not necessary to translate into standard units, but we have to stay consistent with the units we had. So let me ask you just one more time, what was the answer to my question? What is the focal length distance here? The half a meter. OK, that's good, but that's only half good. And the reason it's only half good is this idea we talked about last time, that we have to get into the habit of always writing down a sign in front of any variable. We have to write down a sign in front of every any variable. Now remember. This equation doesn't tell us the sign. That's what these dots are supposed to remind us of. This is one of those many equations in physics that only tells you the magnitudes. It's our responsibility to figure out the sign. Well, what would be the sign of f here? Positive. And how did you figure that out? Um, because we have uh, the uh, Take time. Because we're uh, 
dealing with a, a, a I'm sorry, it would be, uh, it would be negative, actually. Okay, I think that would be better. All right, and why negative? Because we're uh, dealing with a convex mirror which diverges. Correct, and it has this nice This is convex, because if you look into it, it's not like you're looking into a cave, Correct. and convex mirrors are diverging. Correct. They make the outgoing light rays diverge from each other, and we know that diverging is negative. Right. We've seen that actually it's not too helpful to focus too much on the word convex, because that would give different results for lenses or mirrors, but that helped us to see this was diverging, and diverging always gives a negative focal length. So here f would be negative one half. Okay, um, and we can see, uh, review that with that table, was that in the bottom of page one of the optics handout? Yeah, the bottom of page one has all the different types of lenses and mirrors, and whether they're converging or diverging, 